So um, for everybody who's just joining, um, welcome. I'm Megan Jacks, and we are here with Scrapbook Live, and we're going to be putting together the August 2022 bonus gets from Creative Memories. And if you're watching this on YouTube later, there is a link in the description below to be able to get this handout. It's on my blog. And if you are on the Facebook Live, there is a link in the, uh, I think the very first comment, that will take you to my blog so you can get that um, handout. So we'll switch down to my table. And what I have going on here is some photos that I took on a flight from Seattle to Anaheim. And um, I'll admit I don't fly a whole lot um, and I don't have a tendency to fly a whole lot in the summer. And uh, the summer is about the time of year when you can actually see Western Washington when you're flying in an airplane. Um, so when we flew out from Seattle to Anaheim, I, we flew past Mount St. Helens and I was just blown away. That's probably the best I've ever seen Mount St. Helens. I swear every time we go there that, you know, you see all these, these clouds here. Yeah. The last time I was at St. Helens, it was kind of that way where there's just these clouds and you really can't get a good, um, to see, um, the volcano itself. So I was really impressed being able to see Mount St. Helens. It was the perfect time of day, nice shadows, very crisp without being too hazy. And then on our flight back um, from Anaheim, as we were coming up, we could see the various peaks. And I need to double check, but I believe we have Rainier, St. Helens, and then um, I cannot remember the other one that's off to the side that you can see when you're flying up. I've only really ever flown out of Washington Um I think more in like the winter time when you're like headed south trying to find sunshine and everything's covered in clouds. So this was really exciting to for me to be able to see see the 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 landscape from um you know 15,000 or 20,000 feet whatever we were by the time we were starting our um you know getting up to elevation or um coming down uh, to um from those heights when you're flying so i have three photos i really wanted to capture uh the one photo that shows saint helens you can tell i'm in the airplane this is a full four by six i wanted the um to be able to capture the mountains that i was able to see and then this one is just that little bit more of that up close to saint helens so i really want all three of these pictures on this layout our original sketch we see they show two photos here. They have a, a kind of a generous title block that you could um, easily just, if you wanted to trim down into to make a photo fit here. But really, this setup right here is what I'm going for. I'm pretty certain we're gonna do something along those lines with my photos. What I'll be doing then is building in this top, bottom, and side detail around it. So one of the things I noted when I was looking at this, the directions that they give you is they give you, telling you you're gonna use some couple of one inch border strips at the top. So you, you use a total of four one inch border strips, two at the top and two at the bottom, plus an additional half inch detail. So you're gonna be two and a half inches up from the bottom and two and a half inches down from the top. Now, when I look at my 13 by 13 mat, I can immediately see that my photos, I've got two four by sixes stacked here. So I've got eight inches. I'm only gonna have two inches at the top and the bottom to work with unless I wanna overlap. And here you can see that there's there's not any overlap. They've, they've tucked those photos in there because they went with a square here and then a smaller title detail. So one adjustment I am almost positive I'm, I'm gonna be making, I could crop my photos. I definitely could do that. I've got some room to crop these two photos and make them a little narrower. The other option and the one I think I'm gonna go with is instead of using one inch details at the top, I'm gonna cut these or uh, one inch strips. I'm gonna make these closer to three quarter inch. I am just gonna try to tighten up the borders at the top and the bottom. Just tighten them up a little bit. I don't think I need to have as much of a pattern showing through. Uh, the photos are really where I want that to stand out. So I'm pretty certain that's what I'm, that is what I'm going to be doing there. So now it's a little bit of figuring out what papers am I using. You can see this background, it's got um, airplanes on it. Well, maybe you can't tell from the photo, but it's got airplanes on it. This was from the planes um, paper pack. 
And I, I'm honestly, guys, I forgot to look up to see whether this one was still available. I know some of this collection retired and maybe it's all retired at this point. I, sorry, I didn't look that up to see ahead of time. So I decided I'm going to use the planes. Um, it's actually, I'm using some of planes and I think some auto stickers maybe. So they had some border stickers in there. I thought, oh, that's fun. I can maybe use the border stickers. I looked through my border maker cartridges to see whether I could make some, you know, border tiles. I've done that as a creative life scrapbooking project before where you punch um, the tile, the punch with the border maker cartridge and cut out around it. And you have these little like cut out pieces, lots of fun there. Um, but what I was thinking at first is like, oh, I'll just cut some one by two cardstock pieces and I'll just layer these down the side like such. And then I would be able to come in and layer a border sticker just right up it, right? I'll just use the cardstock pieces along and that's hard to see. I'm sorry. And then I would come in with maybe this planes sticker. And I would just come in just like that right up the side. So that was one way I thought of doing it. You could alternate your picks, your, um, the bars and to use some maybe, so I have the charcoal. I can maybe alter in that, alternate in that light gray or the, um, a lighter color and have it be multicolored going up the side. Then what I decided to do, I got to looking at the stickers and I was like, you know what? I think maybe what I'll do is I will just attach those stickers and cut them apart to make those little bars. So I have some little bars that I've, so these are the one by two inch pieces of charcoal cardstock that I then attached the border and snipped it. And I only needed five of them. So I didn't actually lay, I didn't cut a full 12 inch strip lay on my 12 inch border and then cut them in two inch pieces because I only needed four of them because I'm going to alternate it with some Navy. Where's my other piece? There it is. I have some Navy cardstock strips or cardstock tiles that I've made in those one by two. So I just followed the blog, um, the blog directions and made them one by two. And I'm going to alternate these in. And what I did is they're navy, and I'm going to be using this chevron sticker that's part of the tray of the planes sticker pack, and layering these on here. So I didn't do all of these. I need to make a total of three of those bars. So I'm going to do that here. And all I'm doing is I'm just lifting up my sticker right on the strip. And I'm going to lay this down, centering it. I just have to double check because of the way this pattern sits. This pattern's a little tight. I do know that I overlap at the top. So I think I'm going to be okay because I can see a little bit of my navy coming through up here at the top, but that's going to get overlapped by one of my other border the bars. So I think that'll be okay. So this was the part that yesterday I kind of played around with because it took me a little while to figure out exactly how I wanted to approach this. And my goodness that if I did that all, I just realized I totally forgot to start recording. So this recording is going to be a little bit messed up for those watching later because I forgot to start recording sooner. I may be able to just pull it off of Facebook. So we'll see about that. There we go. So I just need to create these border bars. And that's how I'm doing these are these border tiles. So they're the one by two inch strips. And I am coming in here and um, will get these all added, you can see how they're going to come up the side. And I need one more of the Navy with this Chevron. This is from, like I said, from the Plains border or a sticker pack, which is retired now. And 
And I'm going to sneak this one under a little bit. I'm going to come up here a little bit. So I'll have to chop some off the top and the bottom. There we go. And I just needed three of those. So there's those border pieces. All I did, I cut those one by two pieces of cardstock and then I picked out some of uh, the stickers that I wanted from the sticker pack, uh, the border stickers, and I've uh, layered them in there. So I need to, let's see, I'm not sure. I wanna make sure that my chevrons are all going the right direction. Probably need to rotate so they're going upwards. So that's an easy enough uh, part to do to use those stickers, those border stickers as part of these tiles. I have seen lots of variations. As I mentioned before, you can check out all sorts of different ways to do these. Uh, you could do this just with um, embellishments. You could do uh, make them, they recommend the one by two is in the sketch, but if you wanna make them a little bit wider, give yourself a little bit more room to work with um, as your, uh, you know, if you wanna do little embellishments, like little punches or stickers or embellishments all up the side, that's a great idea too. So um, because my recording didn't start on time, um, I'm just gonna quickly explain once again that I, in the sketch itself, they recommend one inch border strips at the top and the bottom. So you have a total of actually two and a half inches. But I have these three photos that I wanna use. I don't wanna crop them any smaller. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna shrink down my one inch strips into three quarter inch strips and um, see how that works to get me where I want to be. I've got, I've got just two inches to work with. So I, once I get those cut to that three quarter inch, I may actually need to overlap them a little bit and make them a little bit smaller. I do want to see some room at the top and the bottom. I may have to crop because I'm thinking I am going to put a little bit of a mat around it. But overall, I do know I want to go a little bit narrower here. So the papers I have to choose from are out of the planes trains and autos pack. Um, these might all, well, some of these are from the auto, some are from trains, and some are from the planes. So the question I came into was, do I want to stick just the blues and the navies, or do I want to incorporate some of the red? Well, I think I'm going to incorporate some of the red, largely because I'm pretty certain I'm also going to be using this red, white, and kind of a cream stripe as well as these compass border stickers from the, uh, the sticker pack. So I am gonna incorporate some of that red and I think I'm actually gonna incorporate that as part of my, um, the, uh, the border that's gonna go around the mat here. So I need to think about that and I'm gonna use, I know I'm gonna use the stripe paper the other part to think about in this layout is they have all different pieces of the paper. They have used a total of six or seven different strips of paper here. Um, if you're working with scraps, that actually can work out really, really well because you may have just different scraps that you can pull from. Sometimes when I'm cutting fresh sheets of paper, I'm a little bit like, well, I don't know if I want to cut seven different pieces of paper. Now, granted, you do have the back side of some of these papers. So um, I don't know. I cannot remember specifically, but this uh, multicolored stripe here at the bottom might be the back side of this red tonal strip. So sometimes you're only cutting into two or three papers, but using both sides. I think what I'm going to do, partly because I also don't want to get it to be too um, visually stimulating by having all of the different pieces, I am going to stick to probably just using a couple of different patterns and not seven different patterns. That will really, I, you know, my pictures are a little bit more understated. It's very, um, you know, the blues and the whites. I don't wanna have too much going on at the top and the bottom and the side to distract from those pictures. So I think I'm just gonna stick with um, the, 
a couple of different patterns. And I'm gonna go first with the navy, this stripe. So I'm gonna cut these, I'm gonna cut two three quarter inch, so two strips at three quarters inch wide. So I'll cut two of those. One will go at the top and one will go at the bottom. So I'm just gonna kind of dry fit things in place. The stripe picks up the navy of my navy border pieces here. And then next up, I need to have another, um, another color. And I think I'm gonna go with, I think I'm gonna go with this kind of tonal blue paper that has um, like all the arrows and dashed lines on it. So I'm gonna cut a three quarter inch strip of that. There's no, um, too much direction to this, so I'm not too worried about that. So three quarter inch, two of those. Now the other part that I need to do is I need a strip that goes over here. I gotta keep that in mind. That's another place where I have a pattern. I have already decided that I had a piece of this compass paper that I'm gonna use for that. And I am gonna go ahead, I believe that piece is the one inch strip. Let me just double check. Yeah, it's, one, it's a one inch strip and I am gonna go ahead and cut that at one inches or one inch. So you can see I'm really sticking with the blues on this. And I like to do dry fits. I actually normally use a um, the scrap and easel, which is a magnetic board, which would allow me. I would uh, if I had a you know, imagine my cutting mat was magnets, and I could actually use little uh, magnets to uh, keep things in place while I'm laying them down. It lets me just get a good visual idea of how I like things. I can you know move it around. Maybe I didn't like a color that I picked. Um, I could make those adjustments. So I just always do a dry fit and I just like the magnets because it just holds everything in place for me because sometimes things start moving. All right. So now I think the next piece I'm going to do is I am going to go ahead and cut my mats and I'm pretty certain I'm going to be able to stick with a just going about an eighth of an inch larger than these two pieces, these two photos. I'm going to mat these, these two horizontal photos. They are four by six. I have not cut them down. I'm going to go ahead and mat them together. So one thing I am going to do though, before I cut my mat is I'm going to double check that I'm a true four by six. Sometimes, you know, when you order things, they're a little bit smaller. So that is definitely six inches wide and four inches. So I have true four by sixes. I wasn't shorted any on the size. So I will add... You can add a quarter of an inch, you can add a half of an inch to that measurement. So it'd be six wide, six wide by eight tall. So I would wanna cut this like to six and a quarter inches by eight and a quarter inches. So I'll do that first. I'm gonna come over here, cut to six and a quarter inch. by eight and a quarter inch. So I'm starting to incorporate some of that red. It's kind of a rusty red.
If I want to have more of that red come through, probably at this point, what I would do is trim my photos down just a little bit if I want more of that red. And then I'll need another I need another mat for my photo here and I can't quite use that last piece. So I'll go ahead and cut. I'm going to cut this one to, instead of doing that quarter inch, I'm going to come over to three eighths of an inch. So four and three eighths by six and three eighths. That's going to let me see a little bit more red. to six and three eighths. That's why I like those, I mentioned those magnets. I like the, keeps everything in place while I'm doing all my cutting. Yep, I like a little bit more of that red coming through. So what I'm actually gonna do is I am gonna cut, I'm gonna trim with my personal trimmer. I'm gonna trim my photos down just a little bit. Making sure they're still the same width. I need these two photos to be the same width. There, I like that. I can see more of that red coming through. So I like, I like where this is headed. I really like, I can see those photos really well. They're popping out nicely. So what I'm gonna do is I am gonna go ahead and start putting things in place, um, what I have going here. The really the last big components I have of this are going to be, um, I'm gonna use those border stickers that I mentioned. I have the compass border stickers and the red, white, and blue border stickers. And I'll put those one at the top and one at the bottom. And, um, and then I think I have a couple of other stickers that I'm going to see about including, but for the most part, I like the basics. I'm going to go and adhere those in place so that we can uh, do all the other details without having everything flying all over. So you'd want to put on your top and bottom border strips first, because those will be covered up on this, um, left edge by your vertical border pieces. So your top and bottom border strips, if you have two or three or however you've done it, there should be another smaller strip that would go to the top of this, but I'm going to be using a border sticker for that. And if it doesn't fit right here, I'll probably put it across the middle or maybe have it re uh, set back a little bit from the, um, I'm not going to take up that full half inch bit. I want to keep my plenty of space here for my uh, horizontal photos. Just getting those strips put into place. Now I will do this horizontal piece over, or the vertical piece over here. And then I'll get those, all those little tiles put in place. This is a pretty easy and straightforward, you know, just probably the hardest part is choosing out the patterns of uh, paper. If you can make it as simple or as complex, use your scraps. If you have those scraps, you know, they don't have to be the one inch strips. If you have narrower ones, it really, you just, it's about building bottom border and a top border, doing something along the side. And then those different types of embellishments that go up the side. 
I'm sticking to that rectangular, uh, the uh, suggested rectangular size, which was the one by two, but you could easily come in with something um, different. So think about how you'd wanna do those. You can rotate this whole thing if you need it to be um, a vertical, you know, rotate your entire layout. That's always an option. You can make it a two page layout. This is a pretty straightforward, which is actually like I mentioned before, is a great um, option for a midweek layout on a Wednesday when we're just trying to get through the week, but we want some crafty time. This is a nice straightforward, I think I need to have a little bit more overlapping. I am using regular adhesive on here, but I'm not going to, um, I'm not pushing down really hard. So I should be able to, if I need to do a release, I can. I can see right now my spacing is, I need to overlap a little bit more. Which really should tell me this one here is my middle. And so here's my six inches on the side. So that should be really telling me I need to try to center this one as much as possible and then space everything else around it. So use your cutting mat to help you with that. Know where your center is. I know six inches is my center and I've got to get seven pieces up the side. So there we go. I like that. I'll trim off the top and the bottom of those pieces. What I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna go ahead and attach my photos to their mats. I'm not gonna put the mats in place until, um, I'll put the photos on the mats, but I won't actually put the mats in place until I've kind of done a little bit more of getting those stickers in, especially this one here, because I might end up you know, pushing it up towards the top a little bit, depending on where I wanna put the little title sticker. There's a cute title sticker in the sticker pack that I'm gonna use. All right, so it's gonna overlap. So I could, I could push it up towards the top a little bit if I wanna use this space down here for anything or I could have it be up here if I wanted to have space up here. Now I can tell you, I'm pretty certain if I do that, I'm gonna actually push things up a little bit, partially because this space here, when I'm looking at my photos, is a little bit more of what I call that dead space, where there's not a lot of detail you need to see in this area. If I'm up here, that's Mount Rainier right there. I need, I wanna be able to see it. So I would need to make sure that I kind of stay away from that corner. I don't want to get too close over here to where I have an important part of my photo. So now they had, and I have to also have to play a little bit with this. They had some, um, uh, like a mountain sticker. This is actually in the, um, the autos sticker pack, they have an airplane, they've got some clouds, they've got all sorts of fun things that I'll probably see about putting in here. It kind of depends on how decorative I wanna get with the stickers. So I may play with those after I wrap up this initial part, but I wanted to show you the, um, well, before we go too much crazy here, I need to get these stickers on. I forgot about those. because I probably should have put those on before I put these border stickers or the, the, the bars in place. It's kind of, I'm trying to look at it on the camera to see, I don't know. I don't know if I'm gonna use that one. Let me try this um, red, white, and blue stripe and see what you guys. I don't know. See, this is where I get a little bit terrible and I'm thinking, I don't know if I want to include it. <laughs> I 
I want the red. And I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to do it right here in the middle. Yep, I'm going to do it along the middle. And I'm actually going to use just the red and white striped. I'm going to lift up my bottom border bar. It's a bad part about stickers. They're so permanent. And I think I will just use... Well, so now the eyes are telling me you like the compass stickers better. What if I use the compass stickers at the top? How does that, the compass stickers at the top look? I'll put the compass stickers at the top. I would think I was going to do that anyway. If I was going to do, I was going to do compass at the top. Stripes at the bottom. The compass pulls over to that side paper. So we'll go with that. Then they have this nice sticker that says, there's nothing like seeing the world from a thousand feet up in the air. So see how I can layer that in right there if I want to without compromising my photos. I'm not taking away from anything. You can still see everything. If I was up here and I layered in, I'd be really just tucked in a little bit too close to Mount Rainier. So I think I'll put that in place. Now I'm not gonna actually put it in place right now because I don't have my photos on. And then I will do either put a little bit of journaling over on this side. I'll find a spot to include maybe a little banner with some journaling. Probably what I'm gonna have to do up here is do a little, um, maybe a little bar that has a little bit of the journaling to say which mountains those are. And I'll put the date in there as such too. So that is, I think that pretty much how it's going to end up with a couple of details still to be added, those embellishments that I have to put in place. So I see a comment coming in, you know, about the struggles with stickers and you can't really, you know, you kind of have to know what you're doing ahead of time when you, cause you put them down, it's hard to pull off. Definitely, that is definitely the case um, for stickers. They can be they can be exciting that way. Um, options that you can do with those, you can use foam stickers. In fact, I'm going to show you if you, I don't know, not everybody is likes foam stickers or the foam dots. They can be nice because they will, um, if I, here's my title sticker. If I decide I'm going to use foam dots on this, so I'll go ahead and put some on, you can actually use those foam dots. I could have just cut around the sheet too. That's what, another option. But now when I put those on there, it's just kind of hovering and I can move it around before I've committed. So if you like foam squares, that's a great way. The thing about foam squares, right? Is that you can, I can move it all around and see where I, maybe I want to just put it up here in the corner. So that's, I've got some details here that I still need to work out. The journaling is important in this one. I don't have, I don't, I could peekaboo pocket this if I want to, but it's not going to work well if I've got a sticker there. So I've got to make some decisions on how I'm going to communicate what mountains these are. If I am just going to put a little banner, a strip here. Um, I have those other stickers that I want to use or consider using. So I need to figure out how am I going to make that work? Um, so those little details that are, um, I'm going to admit are hard for me to do live on camera with you guys. And that's why a lot of times I'll be like, well, here we got the basics done. Now it's a little bit of details. And then I always share the final layout later, um, to be able to, um, so you guys can see, because I will hem and haw over this thing, trying to figure out, you know, can I, can I make this mountain sticker work? 
Can I make, there's an airplane sticker that goes with it, that, that could go with it. Is that too much? Is, you know, does it take away from my photos? I'm really big into making sure that my photos stand out, especially when there are things like this. So, you know, I mean, the airplane in the mountains goes perfect, but is that really, you know, is that what I want to include on this layout? How do I do it in a manner that doesn't take away from those photos? So sometimes it's about knowing when to stop and, uh, I'll have to figure that out. But in general, that is, that's the layout. There'll be some additional details that I will add um, and then I'll get that shared for you guys can see that final layout. But have fun with doing those details. Make the adjustments as you need to on these top and bottom. Um, you know, in the sketch they give us, they come up a little bit higher. I took a full inch off of that. So my borders were supposed to come right across here and right through here at the top. But by tightening things up just a little bit, I gave myself more room for those photos to fit in there. But the overall sketch feeling is still there. You can definitely still see that sketch coming through. So that's the, the layout for today. Um, in terms of, I will have this, I'll have the, I'll share the layout with you. Um, a nice photo of it. If you're watching this on YouTube, stay tuned because it's going to magically appear at the end of the video. Um, but for next week, for the next scrapbook live, we are going to actually put together some borders. So I've picked out two borders from the blog. Um, and so these are what the borders look like from the blog project. We all, of course, I'll be showing you using other supplies. Um, there's actually sketches for these borders. So we'll be working with border sketches, but those are the, um, the borders that inspired the blog or the, the sketches. So that'll be fun. We're going to, I'm going to think we're going to do borders on the last Wednesday of every month. It's just something different. Let's just play with tools in a little bit different ways and um, helps you to uh, start to see kind of like some, I don't know, tips and tricks on how to put borders together. I, I have a lot of customers who ask me, how do I do that? How do I put the borders together? So I want to be able to share with you ways that you can do that. And um, coming up, you're going to see Croptoberfest launches next week. That is a the Creative Memories Croptoberfest. Those products will be available to order on Monday the 29th. Tessa and I do have um, two classes, our standard two classes. We always do the card class. We'll have an all-new set of greeting cards for you guys to put together using the uh, Croptoberfest pay, uh, project recipe kit. And then it also will include a bonus layout made with the leftovers from the uh, project recipe kit. And then of course, we're going to have a page makers workshop that will be using the premium customer bundle um, to put together six two page layouts using all of the wonderful stuff that's included in the premium customer bundle. So details for that are right now are already on the Megan and Tessa website. We'll get the Facebook listing or the Facebook events posted. They're going to be the last week of September. It'll be two, uh, Wednesday, the 20th eighth for page makers and Thursday, the 29th for the card class. So those will be a lot of fun. Looking forward to doing those. We also for creative memory should find out what the uh, September products are that are coming up in um, launching on Monday. So we'll know the, the fall collection that's coming up. So that's all I have for you guys today. Um, I can't wait to see what you guys post. If you do share it, uh, be sure to share it in the virtual crop group and use the hashtag that's at the top of the handout. And that way you can be entered in for a, um, a prize drawing from Creative Memories. If you do want to be entered into that prize drawing, you should primarily use Creative Memories products. Um, but if you're just creating this and you want to share it in one of the Facebook groups, it doesn't have to be Creative Memories. I just love seeing pages made. Um, so just make them, share them. Um, they don't have to have photos, uh, just, um, but share them into the group. We'd love to see them. So, all right. That's all I have for you guys today. I look forward to seeing you next week at the scrapbook live and we'll put those borders together. All right, everybody have a great week. I'll see you soon.